Greetings friends, this is Survival Doc. Today I want to talk to you about a very important topic that your life may depend on when the crap hits the fan. I'm talking about networking or surrounding yourself with like-minded people. Now I know some of you out there are lone wolves, you think you're going to do it on your own. I don't think it's going to work for you. I think you got very little chances of survival if you try to do it on your own. For one thing, you can't stay awake 24 hours a day. It will help to work in shifts. For another thing, if a gang comes to take your goods, you're going to be much better able to defend yourself if you are with a group of people who also have firearms and who can work together as a unit. Also by networking, you're, you have people that you can cooperate with and barter with. Uh, people who are also storing supplies, they may have uh, items that you need and you might have items that they need and you can uh, barter with each other for items. Uh, so my question for you is, who's got your back? When the crap hits the fan, are you going to be on your own or do you have a group of people who you could work with? Now, the question arises, well, how will I meet other like-minded people? Well, of course, you can network with other people at your church. Problem with that is, according to my experience, most churches are filled with a bunch of zombies who are not preparing. Uh, when I talk to a lot of people uh, in, in my church who are about pre prepping or about things that are happening, what I hear is, oh, there's going to be a rapture and we're going to be whisked away before all this happens. Well, I got news for you. According to my Bible, Christians are, are not going to be raptured until after the tribulation. The Bible talks about uh, the persecution of Christians in the end times and I'm afraid that this rapture doctrine is a false doctrine that's taught by a lot of churches and unfortunately a lot of Christians are falling into that trap and when the tribulation occurs they are going to wonder what's happening. I thought I was going to be raptured out of here. Uh, but that's another story I don't want to get off on that topic. Uh, Maybe you can meet some people uh, in your church uh, who are also prepping, uh, but in my experience is there aren't a lot of preppers in church. Uh, okay, how can you meet people who are other preppers? Well, one thing you can do is take a CERT class. CERT is Community Emergency Response Team. All right, this is a program that is sponsored by FEMA. All right, if you're like me, you don't have a whole lot of respect for FEMA, but we do pour billions of dollars of our tax money into FEMA, and we might as well get something out of it. Uh, CERT classes are taught generally by your uh, police departments. Uh, if your community doesn't have one, you are welcome to go to a neighboring municipality and take their CERT class. But where, what you need to do is you need to check with your police and fire department and ask them about CERT training. And if they don't have one in your municipality, they can probably point you to one where you can take CERT training. It's free. You get this nice uh, emergency bag uh, full of supplies when you go. Uh, CERT training, I did not find it extremely useful. It's very, very, very basic information like how to use a fire extinguisher, which I already knew. Uh, the first aid information is very, very, very basic. I really didn't find it extremely useful, but it's free. You get the bag, and I think you will learn something. It's generally like a weekend class. One that I took uh, occurred on a Saturday and Sunday. Some of them have night uh, classes that you take, but it's a short class. Um, when you get this bag, you get some supplies in here. Dust mask, hard hat, gloves, uh, orange vest, but 
one of the important things that you get is you get this certificate of completion. Or what good is this thing? You can take this to your uh, police department and they will make you a, an ID that you wear around your neck saying that you're certified with CERT. Uh, so then if there is a, an emergency disaster of any type, uh, when the police have um, the roads blocked off, and generally they'll block off the roads into a disaster area to prevent looters from coming in. Uh, what you do is you put on your orange vest and you put on your name tag and your your hard hat and you go up to the uh, um, roadblock, show them your CERT ID and they'll let you come right on in. Uh, and of course uh, the purpose of CERT is so that you can help out you can work as a volunteer during those disasters, but uh, being able to get into an area like that will allow you to get in there and check on other people, maybe other people in your group. You want to check on them and see how they're doing to help them. Um, but uh, an advantage of CERT is you can, you will meet uh, other people who are into disaster preparedness. Not everybody will be awake, uh, but there will be some there that you can, uh, where you can meet people who are preparing for disasters. Uh, in my CERT class, uh, I, I met one interesting fella who was very active with our local ham radio club. Uh, that turned out to be very beneficial for me because ham radio is something that I was wanting to get into for quite some time. So he connected me with some ham radio uh, classes uh, in the local club. Um, and that's another place where you can meet uh, preppers. Um, I used to think it cost a lot of money to get into ham radios. Uh, this radio right here costs $30 on Amazon.com. It's a great ham radio. You can upgrade it. You can buy um, antennas. You could just unscrew this thing right here. And uh, there's um, and you can plug another antenna into here. This is a magnet uh, antenna for your car. You can also use it in the house. You can make uh, antennas put on your roof. I've got this book. I've started reading the antenna book. Tells you all kinds of ways to make antennas to put on your roof. Uh, the one thing I learned in my ham radio class is what's more important than the radio is your feed line and your antenna. But it doesn't cost anything to take the uh, ham classes. Uh, you, it doesn't cost very much to take the exam. I think it costs like $15 to take the exam, which got you your license. Uh, so $15, $30 for uh, a radio, and um, take the test. You have to take the test. You have to get a license to communicate. Now, some people out there uh, are stock or they're storing away ham radios for when an emergency occurs. They think they're going to get the ham radio out and, and use it to communicate w with other people. Well, guess what? You're, when the fat occurs and you don't know how to use this thing, you're going to be stuck. You're not going to have the slightest idea. It takes a lot uh, of information and knowledge to operate that. Uh, so when the grid goes down, there's no electricity. <clears throat> your cell phone isn't working. There's no internet. Your telephone isn't working. Uh, how are we going to communicate with other people? Ham radio is the way to go. Ham radio, the amateur uh, radio was set up for emergencies and, um, and it still will serve a great purpose. It's a great way for uh, preppers and people in your network to stay in, in contact with, it, with other people. All right, another way to uh, meet uh, like-minded people is Oath Keepers. It's my favorite way. Oath Keepers is a national organization. I recommend you join. You go to oathkeepers.org and join. Then find out about your local chapter. That is where you will network. If uh, there is no local chapter in your area, start one. That's what I did. Uh, a friend of mine and myself, we joined Oath Keepers and we started the, our local uh, chapter for our city. And now our, it has grown. We have a lot of members. And the thing about Oath Keepers that's really nice is everybody in Oath Keepers is a prepper. Stuart Rose, the founder of Oath Keepers, uh, emphasizes prepping. Stuart sees a huge disaster coming uh, down the, the line as far as a financial collapse is concerned. I think we're getting very, very near. I think 2014 could easily turn out to be 
the big year for the huge dollar collapse and the financial collapse. And uh, that could be uh, occur along with uh, a false flag event uh, like an EMP that could knock out all electricity. Uh, they're they're going to do something to cover their uh, financial collapse because the financial collapse was government banker engineered. And when it occurs, they don't, they're not going to take the blame for it. They're going to try to blame it on something else. So you can look for something else to occur. A war. Gerald Salenti says that when we get to this point, they always take us to war. War is a perfect cover for a financial collapse. But this could very easily be the SHTF situation that we know is coming. Joining Oath Keepers will put you in contact with every, everybody in Oath Keepers, in my experience, everybody in Oath Keepers is a prepper. Uh, coming from National, Stuart, Stuart Rhodes has uh, instituted a civilization a preservation directive for Oath Keepers. I have a separate video on that. I strongly recommend you watch that video where Stuart Rhodes appeared on the Alex Jones show and he talks on, on that video for about an hour on the civilization preservation uh, program, which essentially is a prepper program. Uh, it's something that we're instituting in our local uh, Oath Keepers uh, chapter. We're meeting twice a month. And what we're doing is we're working on recruiting, get in contact with other people. We go to gun shows and get out, give out information, try to recruit new people, which is another great way to meet uh, preppers, uh, people of a, of a like mind. All right, and we meet twice a month and we are, each time we would cover a prepping topic, uh, food preservation, uh, ham radios. We are now starting our own Helm Network just for our Oath Keeper chapter. Uh, now, I'm going to get into Helm Radios more in another video, so I won't go uh, into Helm Radio more uh, at this point, other than to point out that when the crap hits the fan and there's no electricity, everything is going to depend on your ability to communicate with other people in your group. So at that point, I think that Helm radio skills are going to turn out to be a very important skill. All right, another thing that we're doing with uh, Oath Keepers is we are establishing neighborhood watches. And I strongly recommend that you find out about your local neighborhood watch and get involved. And if you, found, if you find that you don't have one, then start one. That's what I'm doing for my neighborhood. It turned out we had a neighborhood watch here at one time. It just fell apart. Uh, they're doing nothing with it now. So what I'm doing is I talked to the uh, local police department, got some advice, and I am, I've talked to a lot of my neighbors, and we're going to start having once a month meetings for our neighborhood watch. Now the neighborhood watch allows you to do several things that are very important. It, I found out, I did not know this, but I found out recently uh, when I read through some materials that I downloaded from the internet, put out by sheriff's associations and the like, about manuals on how to start neighborhood watches, I found out that neighborhood watches today strongly emphasize preparedness. All right, so, Neighborhood watches are a good excuse to get out, go door to door, meet all of your neighbors, invite them to a once a month meeting. It's a topic that everybody's interested in, and that's crime prevention. Not everybody's gonna be interested enough to come to your meetings, but you will find the people in your neighborhood who are interested in this topic. Do your once a month meeting, Start talking about prepping. It's all part of the Neighborhood Watch program. Download and print out the manual. If prepping disaster preparedness is all in there. This will give you a great excuse to network with your neighbors, even the ones who are not awake and are not really ready to be networking. This is a way to find out who among your neighbors is awake 
who you can count on and who you can't count on. All right, you can find out who are the preppers in your neighborhood. Then you can get to know these people on a one by one basis and you can start networking. Not with everybody in your neighborhood, but you can find the ones who are interested in similar topics that you're interested in. You can find the people who are awake. You can find the people who are prepping, who are interested in prepping. And once you, when you at your once a month meet neighbor, neighborhood watch meetings, you can cover a prepper topic and it's a great way to get your neighbors involved in prepping. Because let's face it, when the crowd hits the fan, if you're the only one on your street who has food storage, guess where everybody's going to be coming to get food? All right, you can try to hide your food, you can try to fight them off, but remember some of these people are your friends and family. It's better to get people involved themselves and get people aware and awake and get people to start prepping themselves so that you're not the only one on your street who has preparations. So neighborhood watches, easy to do. I sh just take some of your time. I strongly recommend that you get involved with your neighborhood watch. And if you don't have one, great. That allows you to start it, allows you to uh, head it, and for you to run it the way that you see fit. So, when the crap hits the fan, who's got your back? This is, doc, this is Survival Doc reminding you, be prepared or be prepared to be fleeced. <laughs>